Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 23rd lecture. So, we have been discussing about the Kepler's equation using graphical method. We will continue with that. So, as we have looked into uh, this figure, so we derived, uh, we have these 6 equations 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Using this, we have to work out what we are looking for, this delta F A P. And once we know that, we will be able to work out the uh, time taken from point A to point P. So, this uh, there we have already done this part, this part we have to calculate delta N A P and for calculating delta N A P, we require delta N A M okay. and N A M is given here. N A M is given here by this part and out of these two are given here. So, we have to combine all these results. So, on the next page first I write delta N A M. So, the area delta N A M this equal to delta O A M delta O A M minus delta O N M. And this is from 4 from 5 and 6. So, we can write here delta N A M O M is given here A square E divided by 2 A square E divided by 2 and this is uh, O N M is 1 by 2 A square sin E cos E 1 by 2 A square sin E cos E. So, this is our equation number 7. Now, once we have got this O N M uh, and O A M, basically we are getting here N A M. So, now N A M is here in this place okay. and from there we can get this delta N A P. So, from 3, therefore, from 3, Therefore, from 3 we get here delta N A P delta N A P equal to B by A times delta N A M delta B by A times A square E by 2 minus a square by 2 sin e cos e and this gets reduced to a can be taken outside a b by 2 e minus sin e cos e. This is our equation number 8. Now, from 3 then we go to this we write as here equation this is 3 2 already we have used 
this equation we write as 1 a. From equation 1 way 1 a delta f a p delta f a p this equal to delta n a p minus delta n f p delta n f p so using delta n a p from n a p we have derived here in 8 from 8 and delta n f p from n f p we have derived here from 2 from 2 we get delta f a p this equal to delta n a p. So, delta n a p we have a b by 2 e minus sin e cos e a b by 2 e minus sin e cos e and from there we then we have to subtract the equation 2 which is a b by 2 where a b divided by 2 e minus cos e e minus cos e times sin e. and then we expand e sin e times cos e minus e sin e plus sin e times cos e. Okay. So, what we can observe that this term and this term they cancel out. So, this leaves us with delta f a p equal to a b times e minus e sin e. Okay, this is what we have got there. Now, we apply the formula delta a divided by a dot equal to t minus t or where t equal to t p position at the perigee uh, time at the perigee. So, here in this case delta a is nothing but your area f a p area f a p f a p uh, uh, i hope now uh, i can uh, draw the line 
this is not visible. This is from here to here, then this place to this place and this. So, this is the area, the hashed area we are looking for F A P. So, F A P divided by A dot So, this gets reduced to then a b divided by 2 e minus e sin a e and a dot is nothing but your h by 2. Therefore, t minus t this gets reduced to a b divided by h e minus e sin and we take it on the left hand side some of the terms or we can first uh, work out here itself and then take it on the left hand side. So, we what we want to do we want to write in terms of n which is mu by a q under root mean angular rate as we have derived earlier also angular rate. So, we do that here a times b is nothing but a times a 1 minus e a square under root and h is mu times l under root. So, h is mu times l under root and this gives us mu times a times 1 minus c a square for an ellipse. Okay. And therefore, if we insert it here 1 minus c a square under root, this becomes a cube a to a square a, you know, 1 minus c a square this cancels out mu to the power 1 by 2 times e minus e sin and this implies if we bring it on the left hand side 3 by 2 and as we have already written here this quantity is nothing but n. So, we write this part as n t minus t and this quantity we write as the mean anomaly which is just a mathematical quantity no physical representation unlike eccentric anomaly and true anomaly. So, this is your Kepler's equation using graphical method. So, this has been a uh, very small thing, but uh, doing and uh, assembling from one page to another page it takes time, but it is not a very long one. Once you know that just you have to scale the area and uh, scale the distance, uh, these are the two basic concepts used in this and the rest other is simple geometry. So, rest others are simple geometry which we have used here. Now, thereafter the question arises how do we solve this. So, what we have got uh, here uh, m equal to e minus e sin e. If we rearrange and write it and then let us write y equal to e sin e and also y equal to e minus m and plot it plot both of them here e and y on this axis. 
So, this is E sin A. So, it will pass through the center and it will lo look like a sine curve. Okay. While y equal to E minus m, while E equal to 0, y equal to minus m. So, somewhere it cuts the y axis here okay. and thereafter it has a positive slope of 1. So, it goes like this. So, wherever they intersect, so this you can take as the starting point which will write as E 0. So, this is your E 0 and initial guess and then there are various methods for estimating the value of E because this equation solving it, it, it is not straightforward. and therefore, we have to uh, do it by iterative method. So, any iterative method So, uh, as we have discussed earlier that there are two problems related to what we uh, term this as Kepler's problem. So, given R 0, V 0 at T 0, find R V and T. So, one way I have already stated this uh, integrate means the numerical method, numerical method can be used. The another way the other way I have uh, also stated uh, R 0, V 0, T 0, this is converted first into A E I capital omega small omega and theta the true anomaly which I will write here as T 0 uh, theta 0 and then propagate theta 0 to theta. So, at time t. So, how to propagate till time t? So, for that what we need? m equal to n t minus t. So, if you know the orbit A is known to you and mu is known. Okay. So, therefore, this quantity is known to us. Therefore, to propagate theta 0 to theta, what we need to do? Find out m. Find M using this expression. Once you have got M, then M can be solved for E minus E sin E. So, using M, then you can solve for capital E because E is small e is already known. So, from here solve for E. 
once you solve for e so now here uh, e once known this can be used to solve for theta using the equations or the equation derived earlier which i will again write due course of time equation derived earlier that means theta is a function of e and therefore once you have got this e you can also get theta so this way you have solved for theta so what we have got here the initial guess as e0 so this we can take as in a starting point and solve this equation m equal to e minus e sin e this is our kepler's equation so one very primitive way of doing this is write e equal to m m plus e sin e and then start with e0 so e1 becomes because m is known this quantity is known this we do not have to change and this quantity is also known this is also not going to change so we'll start with sin e0 we get e1 thereafter whatever the e1 we get we use here in this and so on okay so i trade till converges to desired accuracy so this is a primitive way of doing it another way of doing it can be using the newton's method so there we need to write it phi e equal to m minus e plus e sin e so here what is happening that uh, if m the left hand side and the right hand side both are equal okay so this difference will be zero okay if they are not equal so this difference will not be zero so therefore this is acting as a as an error function and we want to minimize it so using the newton's method then we can work it out okay. and uh, this is pretty straight forward phi prime e we write this as minus 1 plus e cos e okay and uh, thereafter the basic equation for the newtons we use and uh, work out this problem so 
So, I am just going to write it here. So, delta E 0 this will be equal to minus phi E 0 divided by phi prime E 0. This is the correction that we get. So, we can give it to E 0 this correction. So, E 1 equal to E 0 plus delta E 0 or delta E itself we can write here delta E. So, th this is the desired correction and uh, how do we get it? Uh, this phi e plus delta e this we can write as e 0 plus delta e phi e 0 plus phi prime e 0 times delta e. And if this is minimized, if this quantity is minimized means going from phi e 0 to phi e 0 plus delta e. So, if this is exactly the minimum, so the left hand side must be 0. So, from here then we can write delta E equal to minus phi E 0 divided by phi prime E 0. Once we have got this, so you just iterate this part. So, here we have phi uh, this is E 1 equal to E 0 plus delta E, where E 0 already we have worked out using this method or using the graphical method and then similarly E 2 will be E 1 plus ok. Uh, if we track this as delta E 0, so it will be easy for us, us to do. Then this will be delta E 1. So, next step you calculate this delta E. So, this goes here in this place ok. Similarly, E 3 will be E 2 plus delta E 2 and this way we will be able to update it. Any other method you wish you can apply Levenborg marker or whatever is available there are many methods of optimization. So, what we have to optimize we have to minimize this phi minimize it ok. So, uh, we complete this lecture here and we will continue with the this lecture uh, later on. Thank you very much.